with the coming of the Arabs and Turks to Hindustan, we find a change in the writing of history. Actually, history writing in its proper sense began in the time of the Turks who came to rule over this country. And also, with, it came along with the Arabs. This is because Islam itself had been a historical event. There had been two trends in the writing of history. One is called the Arabic style of writing history. This had also come down to our country. And the other was the Turkish or the Turki style of writing. Historian K. A. Nizami, who is a very famous medievalist, he tells us that the Arabs had been accustomed uh, to writing genealogies, which they called kasidas, uh, in praise of their gods and goddesses. That was in the pre-Islamic days. Later on, this tradition continued. It did not disappear. And while they uh, wrote, the Arabic historians in the Islamic period, they wrote about an age, about the people, about the atmosphere, about the surroundings. That was the Arabic style. We find, uh, for example, uh, such style of writing prevalent in Chachnama. The author of Chachnama is Anonymous. It gives us not just the account of the hero, the conquering hero Muhammad ibn Qasim uh, and his achievements, but it also gives us detailed account of Sindh, the region which he conquered, about its people, about its flora and fauna, its agriculture, its trade and commerce, and so on. But the Turks who were neo-converts, they were influenced by the Persian culture. They were responsible for the conquest of Persia and the conversion of Persia to Islam. And in the process, they got kind of converted into Persian culture. And part of that Persian culture was writing uh, in the Persian language and adopting the Persian style of history writing. It was to write about kings, about monarchs. It's a kind of a genealogical account. Now we get a whole lot of sources available. One is called uh, Sira, which meant biographies. The other is Ansab. Ansab is, is kind of a, a genealogical table. Then Tabakat. Tabakat in Persian means history, anecdotes, writing down of events. Tariq means history as, uh, too, uh, as well, too. Then we have Malfuzats. Very interestingly, Malfuzats were in the form of conversations, explanation of Sufi ideas, Sufi doctrines between Sufi teacher, the Murshid, and uh, the Sufi disciples, Murid. While the Murshid and the Murid are in conversation, they uh, discuss a whole lot of things about the contemporary situation, about uh, the existing rulers, about the people, and they provided very important information about history and acted as sources of history. Then we have uh, the Maktubat. Maktubat were letters, letters written, royal letters, individual letters, personal letters, letters always even today in the modern period, in the postmodern uh, history writing, letters do form a very important source of history writing, formation of history. And then lastly, Malgazi, which is, um, Malgazi are uh, in a chronology. The historians of the medieval times, uh, they, in a way, they are conscious of time the continuous flow of time, the chronology of time, and they follow a particular calendar. That calendar is the Islamic calendar called Hijrat. Hijra, actually, uh, it starts from the time of Hijrat when the Prophet fled from Makkah to Medina. Coming back to the Persian style of writing, as K. Nizami uh, would tell us, that the Persian style is a very uh, sophisticated style the language used is very high-flown, literary, but the Persian style of history writing 
it would start from the court and uh, it would be concentrating on the court surroundings only. Very little would be known about uh, the common people. Then we have all would-be's Tariki Yamini and it was all about the Ghaznavid and Ghorid invasions. It sort of explained why the Sultan was so important, why there was a necessity for Sultanate. A similar book was Fakhri Mudabbi's Adab al Hab wa Sujjat. This is an account of how Muhammad Ghori came down to this country and eventually won the Battle of Tarain, the second Battle of Tarain in 1192 and uh, the causes of the defeat of Prithira Chauhan and of course the causes of uh, success of Muhammad Ghori and his lieutenant, trusted lieutenant Qutubuddin Aibab. Now this book is uh, perhaps the only book which gives us a detailed account of the medieval Turkish army, the formation of the medieval Turkish army, the battle tactics, the siege, uh, practices, uh, the, um, the field, about the battlefield, use of horses and elephants, uh, all these are known from Fakhri Mudabi's Adab al -Hab. It also kind of uh, legitimize, uh, uh, legitimizes and uh, sort of justifies the cause of Sultan and the Sultanate. We come across next uh, Hassan Nizami. Once again, Hassan Nizam, he was a very religious man. He came from Naisapur in Central Asia, uh, was a Turki, but wrote in Persian. His book is called Tajul Masir. And this book gives us an account how, of how Qutubuddin Aibak eventually settled down in Delhi and uh, became the founder of the city of Delhi. The next historian, if we follow the chronological line, is Minhaj o Siraj uh, Jurjani. He came from Jurjan, a place again in Central Asia, uh, came along with the Ilbari Turks, you know, the first group of Turks like Qutubuddin Aibok and Mohammad Ghori and Iltutmish. He lived in the court of Iltutmish. He was a proper uh, court official. And his book is the first example of the Persian style of writing history because he was sitting in the darbar in the court listening to what the sultan was saying and jotting down uh, notes in his book and then writing sort of amplifying magnifying whatever notes he had taken down and his book is centered around the court the court of the sultanate in delhi around the personality of uh, Minhaj Ur Siraj's uh, account continues even after the death of Iltutmish. He gives us the tragic tale of Razia and then he tells us uh, about his own plight because his own life was in danger and he uh, had to flee from Delhi. There was a sudden rise of the Ulema class and also the nobility take a seizing power. So he fled to what in those days known as Laknawati, meaning Bengal. And his is the book, the only book, the book is called Tabakat in Nasiri. In this book, he refers to uh, the um, account of Bakhtiar Khilji, of how Bakhtiar Khilji marched along Bihar and came to the kingdom of Laknawati and was able to defeat, there was no fighting of course actually, but confronted with Bhaktiya Khilji's horseman, Lakshman Shen, the last Hindu Shen ruler fled. Uh, this account is only found in Tabakati Nasiri. Then of course, after Minhaj, we come to Ziauddin Barani, the very famous historian of uh, the pre-Mughal days of the Sultanate period. His books are called Tariqi Firoshahi and Fatwa e Jahandari. Tariqi Firoshahi is a narrative. It's a long narrative from Gyasuddin Balwan right down to the time of Firoshah. This entire period had been 
remembered, recalled and put down in writing by Ziauddin Barani. Barani is called a historian in the true sense of the term. The other book, Fatwa-i Jahandari, was a kind of a political treatise, deals with the characteristics of the Sultanate, why the Sultanate had, and how the Sultanate is working, what should be the necessary characteristics of a Sultan, what should be the duties of the Sultan. And also, the Fatwai Jahandari is famous for giving a full account of the market control system of Alauddin. The contemporaries of Barani were Amir Khasru, the famous poet, the scientist, and also historian. Amir Khosru wrote several books, uh, two historical accounts. One is called Khazayan ul Futo and the other is called Kiratul Sadain. The first book, Khazayan ul Futo, deals with the military conquests of Alauddin Khalji. It gives us a description of the Alai army and how it operated in North India, in Chitor and elsewhere. And particularly, uh, he writes about the Deccan campaigns of Malik Kafur giving a very uh, descriptive account of Devogiri, which came, later came to be known as Dawladabad, about Devogiri. The second book, Kiratul Sadain, it starts from the time of Balban's death, then the request of the armies to Bugra Khan, Balban's son, to come to uh, Delhi and set up his administration, Bugra Khan's refusal, and uh, the succession on uh, to the throne by Kaikobad Bugragan's son. All these aspects of Sultanate history had been discussed in detail in Kiratul Sadain. But his other books like Ashik or Nu Sipir serve as sources of history because uh, these books uh, depict a social picture of the time, particularly Nu Sipir. In Nu Sipir, Amir Khosru tells us about the mixing of the two cultures, about the scientific and technological uh, experiments that were taken uh, up during that time. We talk about cultural synthesis, New Sapir by Amir Khosru, which uh, uh, serves as an important source book on that account. Another contemporary writer, author, of the time of Barani and Amir Khosru was Isami. His book is called Futu Salatin. The title of the book gives its meaning. Salatin means Sultanate. Futu means March of Victory. He writes right from the beginning, from the time of Mahmud of Ghazni. Isami wrote his entire history book in verse. He lived in the court of the Bahamani ruler in the south, but he came from the north, from Delhi region, because his grandfather, father, his uncle, his great uncle, they all served the Sultanate. And as such, Sami's account of Muhammad bin Tughlaq's different experiments, like his transfer of capital to Dawlatabad, or his uh, experiments in the Doab region, agricultural and revenue experiments, or his attempt to introduce a token currency. All these uh, had been described by Isami in a very bitter manner. Uh, he would point out that all these were done because the Sultan was not in his senses. He was, in fact, a kind of whimsical ruler, and he did whatever, whenever he liked. We have two more authors, major authors, uh, historians of this time writing on the Sultanate period. One is Hindu Qasim Ali Ferista. He wrote a book called Tariki Ferista. It was probably written at a later date, in the uh, more in, uh, prob in the 15th century. And the other book is by Ya Yaha bin Ahmad Sarhindi. Uh, his book is called Tariki Mubarak Shahi. Uh, Tariki Mubarak Shahi gives us an account of Taimur's invasion and the, the plunder and uh, 
the ravages that he carried out in Delhi in 1398. We get this account from Sir Hindi's book, Tariqi Mubarak Shahi. I should mention a trend amongst the historians who wrote these tariqs and tabakats. They would name their books after the sultans who, uh, in whose time they finished their work. That was the, actually the custom. For example, Minhaj named his book tabakat e nasiri Who was this Nasir? Meaning the history of Nasir, Nasir e meaning of Nasir. Uh, this Nasir was Nasiruddin Mahmud, a son of Ildutmesh, who ruled up to 1266 when he died and Balban took over. Minhaj followed the custom of the time. The custom of the time was to name the book after the Sultan in whose time he had finished, and he finished his writings in the time of Nasiruddin Mahmud. Hence, Tabakati Nasiri. Similarly, uh, Ziauddin Barani named his book Tariqi Firoshahi, though he started from the time of Balban. He did not live in the time of Balban. He was a very young contemporary of Alauddin Khalji. He was a more adult and mature contemporary of Qutubuddin Mubarak Shah, Alauddin's son of Piyasuddin uh, Tughlaq, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, and Firoz Shah Tughlaq. This huge book was finished in the time of Firoz Shah, so he called it Tariqi Firoz Shahi. Coming to other source materials, written sources, we can refer the Malfuzats, written Malfuzats. The most important Malfuzat of the time was Khairul Majlis. This particular Malfuzat was about Nasiruddin Chiragi Dehli, the famous Chisti Sufi saint who lived in Delhi in the time of Alauddin Khalji and was a very close friend of Alauddin. Just before Alauddin introduced his famous price control system, he was in some doubts about the whole project and he was in conversation with Nasiruddin Chirag. Now these conversations were put down in writing a little later by one of his disciples called Hamid Kalandhari and called it Khair Ul Majlis. Majlis as you know meaning meeting. In one could say there was an awesome existence of historical texts all over Hindustan, not just centered in Delhi, written by the court historians, written in Persian in a very high flown style, in a very good Persian uh, language. But there were histories written in the distant uh, regions. Shamsi Siraj Afif, who was a contemporary of Barani too, and who wrote a book, Tariqi Firoz Shahi. In this book, the term Bangala was first used by Shamsi Siraj Afif. That was in 1355-56. Similarly, uh, we find that so many books would be written in such regions like Bangala or Kashmir or Gujarat or even in the south in uh, the Bahamani kingdom or in the Vijayanagar kingdoms. The related historians, they uh, depended on those contemporary historical works to write their own histories of the time. Ma'am, what are the other sources of history apart from the literary sources? Of course, we have uh, the archaeological remains, remains of monuments, and uh, also coins available, silver, gold, and copper and of course inscriptions. And what are the characteristics of the archaeological remains in the Sultanate period? The most important characteristic is that we see a kind of synchronization of two cultures, the Central Asian and the Indian. And this is very evident uh, in the remains of monuments that are found in the Qutub complex. In the Qutub Minar itself, the Alai Darwaza, the Kuayatul Masjid. On the walls of a mosque, you see Hindu motifs and illustrations. This probably happened because Indian artisans and skilled craftsmen were used who knew their own way of sculpting or own way of making a construction. 
and uh, they used their own styles, which was not interfered with because we still see them today, like the lotus, like the bell. There could be another possibility, sometimes uh, slabs, chunks, uh, parts of non-Islamic structures, whether Hindu or Jain, were used as building materials in the architectural arrangements. That too was not interfered with. This is very evident. And uh, the fact that they were allowed to stay on, allowed to remain on the walls of a mosque uh, or on the wall of the Qutub Minar in the tombs is evident of the fact that the sultans did not actually bother about if there were non-Islamic motives on the structures. I think I should mention another thing that the sultanate architecture differed from region to region and they adopted uh, local styles like the thatched roof, hut roofs in Bengal were adopted in making of their mosques and other buildings. And in the same way, the serpentine arches of Rajasthan and Gujarat, typically indigenous to these places, were used in the sultanate architecture as well. What kind of coins and inscriptions do we get during the Sultanate period? The Sultans, uh, of course, minted their own coins, but uh, in the earlier period, a very interesting characteristic is uh, to be seen uh, that in most of the coins, uh, th uh, we find the image of the victor, in this case, Muhammad Ghori or Kudubud Naibok, uh, images of them uh, uh, were impressed upon the image of the defeated, in this case, Prithira Chauhan or any other Rajput rulers. Perhaps the impression to be given was to prove to the people uh, the power of the conqueror, the overriding and overpowering authority of the conqueror. We have also the forged coins of Muhammad bin Tughlaq as a kind of uh, real evidence uh, as to the textual information given by Ziauddin Barani. A lot of forged copper coins had been found around Dolotabad and also in Delhi. And then we have, uh, this is also very interesting, use of uh, Sanskrit language and the, the Devnagri script on the reverse side probably to gain popularity and also to make the Sultanate rule familiar to the people. As for inscriptions, uh, inscriptions uh, provide us with information in a very interesting manner. Uh, we have, I will mention just two inscriptions. One inscription that had been found in the time of Hiroshi Shatuglok. This inscription tells us it is sort of inscribed on the walls of a mosque and it gives us an account of Firoz Shatuglok's activities and achievements and uh, it has been assumed by the historians that uh, these inscriptions were excerpts from his autobiography called Futu Us Firoz Shahi. The book, the text is lost but excerpts of it has been found in the form of inscriptions on the walls of a mosque in Firozabad in UP. Another inscription belonging to an earlier period in the time of Gyasuddin Balban is evident of Hindu attitude, Hindu mentality and feeling towards the Sultanate rule. This particular inscription is also found in the UP region, UP Bihar border on the walls of a temple which tells us about uh, how the Hindus felt about Balban's rule. In fact, the person who had written the inscription says that he is like Ramchandra. Balban is uh, an incarnation of Ramchandra, the epic <laughs> hero.